Hello, welcome to Keg That's YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about California Commons and why they're a really great style and they're a really interesting style of beer to brew and how you can go about brewing your own. So what is a California Common? It's also known as a Cali Common for short or a steam beer and it's basically a amber lager brewed with lager yeast but fermented at ale temperatures, so at around 18 to 20 degrees. There is one beer which is sort of the quintessential style for this beer, which is Anchor Steam Beer. So if you ever had that before, and it's a delicious beer, I would strongly recommend getting it if you can, because the brewery is actually shutting down as I'm making this video, then that is what a steam beer should be like. But if you can't get hold of one, it's a beer which has got really nice caramel flavors, it's got nice grainy flavors, and it's also got a balanced bitterness and some old world hop characteristics such as herbal, spicy, and floral. There really aren't that many California commons around, uh, like craft breweries don't seem to be making these in any sort of large quantities, but it's a lager style which was made to be brewed fairly quickly and fairly easily and it's a really good style for the home brewer to pick up and give a go. Maybe you've not brewed a lager before and you want to, this is a really good stepping stone from uh, going outside the comfort zone of an ale to making lagers. The recipe that I used, and there's a link down below if you want to buy the recipe kit for this, is 4.2 kilograms of Lager malt, uh, I don't remember what it is, whatever it says on the packet is what I used. 300 grams of crisp extra light caramel, and 300 grams of crisp Vienna malt, and 300 grams of crisp medium caramel. This is to provide that really nice kind of complex caramel flavor and grain flavor and uh, sort of malt, um, malt flavor. Now, I have actually made this style quite a few times before, and sometimes I do like to brew it as a pale lager, which is totally fine to do because it's all about the yeast choice and the fermentation. Also, if you wanted to brew a black lager, you could definitely do that this way as well. But I brewed it just like I would any other beer. I put the mash on and I held the mash about 65 degrees for uh, 60 to 90 minutes. I tend to do 90 minutes, but if you do 60 minutes, that's cool. You do 60 minutes. And then I did the sparge, etc., and the, the boil, and I threw the hops in at the boil. And for the hops, I used 20 grams of magnum at 60 minutes and 25 grams of Hersbrucker at the 10 minute mark, so 10 minutes before the end of the boil. I also used a protoflock tablet, as I would every other beer. I then fermented it. And uh, this is the, perhaps the most important bit, the fermentation. So I used two packs of Saflaga W3470. The reason I used two is just because I have these out of, <laughs> I have these out of date yeasts. Uh, so I pitched two packets just to make sure, but if you buy a sachet of uh, Saflaga, it should be in date. So you should only really need to use one. So I held the temperature at 18 degrees throughout the fermentation. And that's kind of the important bit. Between 18 and 20 degrees is fine. There are also California common type yeasts. So you can use those. I think Mangrove Jacks has one, but I know that uh, both Y Yeast and White Labs have their own style as well. Uh, I like to use a real lager yeast just because I usually have it to hand and I'm usually making lagers. So it's a bit more useful to have that than a specific Cali common yeast. Uh, I also cold crashed it. So uh, it cold crashed for about a week. And let's see how it has come out. It looks pretty clear. I don't know if, how well the camera's picked that up, but uh, it's probably the first clear beer or the clearest beer I've done on this channel anyway. Uh, probably because of the cold crash and I actually remembered to put protoflock in this time. It's like a really nice uh, reddish copper color it's got a uh, small to medium head, which is fairly stable, fairly rocky as well. It's got a very malty, grainy forward aroma. It's quite sweet as well, like maybe a bit of honey or something. Bit of caramel coming through, it's not that strong. Over, overall, the, the aroma is uh, perhaps on the medium side. It's not like boof in your face uh, kind of aroma. 
So there's quite a bit of grainy and caramel flavor. There's a uh, long bitter finish, which sort of balances out that malty sweetness. Kind of like a toast character to it as well. And yeah, I am getting uh, a small bit of hop character as well of the uh, herb or spice flavor coming through. It's a bit on the subtle side, but it's there and it adds like a layer of complexity. But it's a really good, easy drinking beer. It's fairly easy to brew. Uh, if you need tips on how to hold temperature without a fermentation chamber, please let me know in the comments because I can make a video on how to... It's, it's a really pleasant beer. It's not the most intense of flavors, like the flavor is a medium intensity, but it's nice to have an easy drinking beer. You can like sit back and just have a, a few of. You don't need to lager this, but sometimes it does help to leave it a bit just to let the sort of green flavors curb. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you've made California common before, I'd really like to know how it's gone for you and what your thoughts on the style are. Uh, thank you. But wait, there's more. I had too much beer to go into a keg, so I put about five liters of it into a smaller keg along with some Sriracha Ace hot pellets. Now, because the beer itself is mostly malt-based and the hop character is fairly neutral, it actually makes a really good base for trying out different hops. I love Sriracha Ace, actually, so it's not necessarily trying it out, but I made a completely different style of beer. This is more like an IPA than any kind of lager. The aroma is typical for Sriracha Ace, so it's kind of bubblegum and dill. The flavor as well really showcases the Sriracha Ace hops, but it has a fairly complex malt bill to back up the beer as well. So if you do make this beer and you have some left over, a really good way to try and get two beers from one batch is to put a bunch of hops in the keg to uh, basically dry hop it and it changes the style of beer, which is another reason I love the style. Anyway, thank you for watching.